Welcome back to Newsmax Prime. Time now for part five of my exclusive interview with 2016 Republican presidential candidate Bobby Jindal. Governor Jindal and I served in Congress together, and we began our conversation reminiscing about a symbolic gesture he suggested that made a real impact on Capitol Hill. Governor Bobby Jindal, here we sit in a dressing room not far from a theatrical stage. Reminds us that it's been said presidential politics is two-thirds theater. I remember when you first came to Congress, before any bill, before any policy initiative per se, it was a symbol with which you were involved. Mm. Do you remember the recommendation you had for President George W. Bush and the House and Senate Republicans? J.D., first of all, it's great to see you again. I think I remember what you're talking about during one of the State of the Union addresses. I recommended we hold up our fingers dipped in purple ink and to symbolize what had just happened in Iraq in terms of the democracy, the election that had just taken place there. And a bunch of members did that. And I understand the president was, uh, as he was walking out, you know, said something to one of his aides. He was surprised how many people stood up and did that. It's great to see you again. You know, here's the funny thing about this election. We are sitting back here backstage. This, every politician will say this, but it really is true. This is the most important election of our lifetimes. And I think people get it. We did two town halls today here in Iowa had incredible crowds. The last one, Standing Room only in Urbandale, they get it. On a Saturday afternoon, people are coming out saying, this is about our children and our grandchildren. That's encouraging to me. And what I hear about the buzz around Iowa has to be encouraging to you. People say you're in position, as Mike Huckabee performed in 2008, as Rick Santorum performed in 2012, people are saying, don't be surprised if Bobby Jindal has that kind of success in Iowa in 2016. Why do you think that is? Well, a couple of things, and thank you. We are hearing that. We are seeing growing and growing crowds. Two things. One, we've said, let's do something different. Let's embrace our own principles. You know, Jeb Bush says you've got to be willing to lose the primary in order to win the general. J.D., I disagree with that. I think it's time for us to embrace our own principles and say, look, we don't need a second liberal party. We don't need to be cheaper Democrats. We're going to secure the border. We're going to repeal Obamacare. We're going to invest in the military. We're going to shrink the federal government, grow the private sector. We're going to stand with Israel. We're going to stop Iran from becoming a nuclear power. And secondly, I think people are looking for a doer, not a talker. We've got a lot of candidates that are making a lot of empty promises. Look, we've got a talker in the White House. We got a president who needed on-the-job training, a first-term senator who had never run anything before. We're not just talking about doing these things. We've done these things. So in my state, we've cut our budget 26 percent, 30,000 fewer state bureaucrats. We are now the top 10 state for private sector job creation, the most pro-life state six years in a row. And I think people are looking at going, here's a guy that's willing to do and say the things you're not supposed to be able to do and say. I think folks are tired of the status quo. They're tired of the establishment in both parties. They were promised if Republicans took the majority last year, things would change. And on amnesty, on Obamacare, on the budget, they didn't change. I think people are looking for a fighter that will go and represent them. Before your aides whisk you off to this appearance, what's the biggest lesson you've learned, whether in Congress or certainly now as governor and running for president? What's the biggest lesson that will reinforce Bobby Jindal in this uh, pursuit of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue? J.D., one of the things that's been reinforced me again and again and again, I think it's one of the great differences between us and them, at the meaning of the left, is I trust the American people. On issue after issue, what they have shown is they have got more wisdom than their so-called leaders in D.C., the elites in D.C. On issue after issue, the left thinks we're just not smart enough to pick the schools for our kids. They think we're not smart enough to know what kind of insurance to buy, health insurance to buy. They think we're not smart enough, if you live in New York, to know not to drink big gulps every day for breakfast. They think we're not smart enough to have guns and Second Amendment rights. They think we're not smart enough to have religious liberty rights. They don't think we're smart enough to know how to spend our own money. They don't think we're smart enough to know what kind of foods our children should be eating at their school lunches or at home and their snacks. You know, the arrogance of the left, Hillary Clinton and and President Obama, is they really do think they know better than us. They, They are, look, Bernie Sanders at least is honest enough to call it socialism. They're socialists. They just won't call it socialism. The thing that I'm just so comforted by is everywhere I go, whether it's here in Iowa, whether it's at home in Louisiana, New Hampshire, your state of Arizona, Florida, South Carolina, all over this country, young people, old people, everybody... People that are Democrats that voted for this president come up to me and say, you know, I can live my own life. I don't need the government telling me how to live my life. And you see in the fight over Common Core or Obamacare or taxes or school lunches or our Second Amendment or religious liberty, and it is 
great to see everyday Americans rise up and say enough's enough. Our founding fathers knew the genius of this country was a limited government that secured but didn't create our God-given rights. The left has forgotten that. The American people, I think, are going to seize their freedoms back in 2016. Uh, continuing on the subject of presidential candidates, uh, the cap that Donald Trump has been wearing on the campaign trail and at his various campaign stops, spelling out his slogan, Make America Great Again, well, simply stated, this cap has become a sensation, and now you can get your very own Make America Great Again cap, a $25 value, but you can get it free with this offer. All you have to do is pay shipping and handling. Go to Newsmax.com slash Trump cap or call 1-800-485-4350.